The third uh, presentation will be by Dr. Marcus Mehdi Gerhard from Germany. It is entitled uh, The Position of Different Cultures and Customs of People in the Lifestyle and Thoughts of Imam Ali and his connection to daily life of Muslims in Europe. Uh, we ask uh, Professor Marcus Oke to. Dr. Marcus come to uh, is uh, German by birth, but the most interesting. Uh, turning point in his life, he has converted from Catholic Christianity into Islam in 1989. Uh, he is a researcher, a translator, uh, an author, uh, uh, cooperated with uh, many uh, NGOs, uh, governmental and non-governmental institutions. If you'd like, it's up there. Okay. Yeah. And he's uh, participating in a, a translation a project about uh, the Holy uh, Quran. Nowadays, he is in cooperation with the Institute of Islamic Pedagogy in North Rhine, West Anglia, in German. So, welcome, Doctor. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, as-salatu wassalamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa sayyid al-mursaleen, sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tayyabina al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Sada al-ulama wal-bahithun, ikhwati wa akhawati, as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for this uh, beautiful gathering to know each other, ta'aruf, and to hear uh, very nice speeches about different subjects. I will speak about Imam Ali السلام, and his connection to people and his uh, attitude towards uh, different cultures and thoughts. When the researcher who loves wisdom and knowledge, reads the words and statements of Imam Ali alayhi salam, especially in the wonderful book of Nahjul Balagha, collection of speeches, letters, and short words of the Imam, he will find many points and discussions about the social coexistence and building this life lived together in peace and happiness in the light and on the base of the real values of Islam in the style of Prophet's household, peace be upon them. Times and situations exist in the life of Imam Ali السلام, in which Muslims approve wars, battles, and conflicts between themselves. How did the Imam face oppositions, enemies, friends, and companions? And how was his behavior towards them? At which periods does mankind need toler tolerance and peaceful behavior more than harshness? And where are the borders of this tolerance? How was the op opinion of Imam Ali السلام, about the different cultures, customs, and religions in the time of expanding Islam from the Hinduist and Buddhist East to the Christian West in Anatolia, Syria, and Egypt? How did Imam Ali السلام, open doors for dialogue and a peaceful social life? These questions are related to Muslims' life in Germany and Europe, who need practical methods for continuing their life with happiness and success. As a responsible person for training Muslim teachers for Islamic education in public schools and colleges <clears throat> in, Ge in Germany, and also as somebody who is in touch with young, young students and pupils, it is an interest, an interest for me how we can use Imam Ali's attitude towards social and educational affairs and how we can manage cultural, cultural and religious differences in education in a secular country like Germany. 
This question leads me to the following headlines. How faced Imam Ali alayhi salam people? Imam Ali's opinion about human rights and different cultures and religions. The place of cultures, customs in political practice and views of Imam Ali and Imam Ali and his attitude towards power. When we have a research in different statements, letters and speeches of Imam Ali, we see that the Imam regarded every human being as equal. He avoided to make differences between believers of religions or members of various nations because in his system of thought, mankind is equal in front of the Creator. This method of ruling and interacting with individuals has, was very new in the ancient ages, when only the membership in a tribe or religion was a guarantee to be safe and to stay alive. For example, in the pre-Islamic Arabic society, tribe, clan, and family were everything. Without having connections to a well-known tribe, Man couldn't live freely and in security. Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, like Bilal or Salman al-Farsi, are very good ex examples for people without connections to a strong protector or tribe. And now, after periods of oppression and revival of old Arab values, which had to be removed but came out again after the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, a man and ruler like Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, begins his rule with the opinion that his reign is not more worth than an old leather shoe when he could not change injustice into justice and help people. This attitude towards power and engagement for people is something that is even not achieved in so-named modern democratic societies. Imam Ali's style of ruling is, in my opinion, a mixture of recognizing realities and the aim <clears throat> to change unjust realities with the guidance of mercy, empathy for each member of the society. Muslims, Christians, Jews, and others are equal in the eye of Ali's justice and politics. In modern politics, we can see everywhere the lack of such an ethical approach to power, society, and those who have to be ruled. Nowadays, and it was the same in old days, political decisions are the result of power calculations and leading factors like economy, military power, and contracts. For Imam Ali, السلام, his personal relationship with ordinary people is the key to success and not political power. Following this policy, Imam Ali السلام, elected always personalities as governor for different parts of the Islamic State he could trust fully. The Imam always chose uh, persons like Malik al-Ashtar. In general, it can be said that respectfulness towards every cultural or eth uh, ethnic and also religious origin is the main axis in social politics and government of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Following the footsteps of the great Imam in various sources, I want to compare his approach in my uh, speech and after this in my article, to uh, um, existing models nowadays in modern society and to see which approach of the imam can lead us to a new style of ruling and organizing society. How can thoughts and models of Imam Ali be used in modern education? I would like to start this part of my speech with a story that happened in the time of Omar ibn al-Khattab's rulership. It is mentioned in the most important book of the great Lebanese author, George Jordak, named Imam Ali, the voice 
of human justice al sawtu al insaniya he writes in the introduction to one of the chapters in the fourth volume somebody claimed in a subject imam ali in front of the caliph umar ibn al khattab umar <coughs> invited both to his court and said to uh, imam ali stand next to this man imam ali seemed to be angry and umar asked him are you upset because you have to stand beside your enemy imam ali alayhi salam answered never but you treat me with respect and say to me ya abul hasan and don't behave the same way with him in another incident imam ali alayhi salam was sitting on the top of a horse and some people followed him he addressed them and asked why do you follow me do you have anything to do with me they said nothing he answered so don't follow me because following a rider um, destroys him and humiliates the followers in these two incidents some very important points about imam ali's attitude towards people and human rights are shown clearly the imam had a deep understanding of equality He is one of the most important personalities of Islam, the husband of the Prophet's daughter. He will become the become the fourth caliph of all Muslims and he is the first imam of Shiites and one of the most educated persons in wisdom and belief. But when it comes to rights and interactions with other human beings or legal affairs, he wants to be equal with others. It is not important for Imam Ali alayhi salam if the claimer is right or not from which origin or branch of the society he comes he wants even for his enemy a respectful behavior because in front of the law only the truth is important and not the origin in other aspect or other aspects he is not upset because of standing next to a normal man because he regards himself a creation of god and human being in front of the law the second incident has the same message imam ali doesn't want to have followers like kings or rulers pharaoh and so on he wants supporters who decide freely to follow him to follow the real values of islam his aim is to educate conscious human beings who are confident in this view values and the truth are more important than persons it was the wrong decision at the beginning beginning of islam and after the uh, passing away of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and it is the same wrong way in muslim societies and communities to follow only emotions without wisdom and consciousness in the time of the first generation of muslims and after the death of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam people gathered to elect the caliph and ruler but their scale and values were not clear to find the right person for this very sensitive task at the end people returned to what they knew it was to elect the old respected person which was assumed to be the right person with much, much experience to lead people to the true path thank you dr marcus are there any yes um, uh, let's say other yes. important points that you want to mention yes of course in the last two minutes I will, uh, yes thank you very short sure. um, and this is the beginning of um, a, a big mistake um because people couldn't find the right person as somebody was elected who had not the the values and the scale uh, of imam ali alayhi salam what i want to say and you can read it after in in the article is we are in ye- in need in muslim societies and on, uh, also in western societies of these thoughts of imam ali and the aimma in the fact of Uh, justice equality uh, democratic approach to everything to ask people what they want and that is what we see 
in the seerah, in the life of Imam Ali alayhi salam and uh, the household of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Wa ashkurkum ma tahiyati wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.